This is the Zach Asbury Show. Welcome. On today's podcast clip, we have Professor Rachel Kennedy from the Ehrenberg Bass Institute, University of South Australia. I'm talking to her and she tells me that... Um, about how she used to actually go about analysing this data, that there were these big wheels of data that were on film and you'd have to book time at the one computer that the university had and you'd hand over your film and your analysis, like computer inputs to someone and, and they would run it overnight. And if you made one small error in your code, well, then it didn't turn out properly the next morning and then you had to redo it. Um, and it made me think just how grateful I am that everything's on the computer and like you have to pay attention because you can make errors, but um, we can manipulate data like this now. Uh, and and we've got access to literature mm. at the click of a finger That's as well. That's true, yeah. So that. that was one thing when I was working with Andrew, I would go online to the library to get the latest literature in the field, whereas to him that was quite new. You yeah. had the hard copy of the journals oh. that you read or you went to the library and might request copies from other journals. So, you know, yeah. I was a completely different world in terms of, you know, just having Excel and access to libraries online. And wow. so that's where I could add value to the partnership because I could speed up some things, but he just had that incredible curiosity and the thought of how to tackle these problems and so much else that oh. made a huge honour for me. I can only imagine how, how, I don't know, having giant stacks of physical copies of journals and needing to use that as your database of how to write stuff and um, to keep track of it all yeah no referencing software <laughs> absolutely and <laughs> all the things we take for granted i think there's actually room to move in that referencing software but we'll, we'll see that's a another bit. project for you when you've done enough podcasts <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is pretty fun so far actually i quite like it um yeah okay so your work for the brand user profiles paper was was a replication of kathy's work um uh, like I, I view replication extension research as, as fundamental to the way science should be done and how we progress. You're good Ehrenbergian. Very good Ehrenbergian. But, you know, rather than people listening to me, did you want to perhaps give your view on uh, replicate the importance of uh, replication and extension research? It's a fundamental pillar of science and that's where we are standing on the shoulders of the likes of Andrew Ehrenberg and Gerald Goodhart of that fundamental pattern spotting of do we see the same things time and time again and or where do they vary? Mm. And you can only systematically do that if you keep collecting data the same way or the same way with slight extensions so that you can see how the world works. And so, yeah, huge fan of the importance of replicating time and time again so different researchers have confidence that they find the same thing, mm. that you see the same thing if you use slightly different measurement tools or if you don't, starting to understand why. Have you actually found something that's different or have you made a mistake and your tool's dodgy or whatever it might be? Yeah. And, yeah, so most of the time what comes to, head, comes to mind for me when I think about it is um, having that confidence that, this knowledge has been found in so many different circumstances by so many different people that are independent researchers, so they don't have an innate confirmation bias or, or anything like that. Um, different brands, different categories, different periods of time, so that you can go ahead and have, have pretty strong confidence that it's going to apply for your brand and, and your market. But I think the thing that I often don't think about, which is actually nice to be reminded, is when there are deviations to it, what does that actually tell you? Um, is there something wrong with the way you've measured it or is there something genuine here? Um, was the brand only available for half of the year? Is it only supplied in half of the supermarkets? Um, all sorts of things that could... Yeah, and we do know lots of brands do deviate mm. and it's that then pulling the deviations together and going, OK, there is commonality. Store brands systematically do look different. Yeah. And once you understand when things deviate systematically, you can start to put theories and understand why. So in the store, brands being different, they have different distribution to national or international brands. And you start to get extra insight in terms of how the world's working. Completely. Um, so, yeah, we we're talking a little bit earlier about, uh, you know, you've moved from knocking on doors in Adelaide to, you know, going to Melbourne or Sydney, then visiting London and, and New York and more of those sort of head offices there. 
At what point did it become the Marketing Science Centre and then at what point did it change to Ehrenberg Bass Institute? I should know the exact year and I could look it up easily, but it's not coming to mind. But I can tell you why it I happened. I think that's the, that's the way more interesting part anyway. E exactly. So we were happily chunging along as the Marketing Science Centre out there engaging with industry and, you know, starting to do the same thing more often and getting better and better at it. And um, we got to a certain size and the university kind of rewarded us by giving us institute status, which is far nice. more prestigious mm. kind of in the university and came with some funding. So it's very nice on one level, but you can't be the Marketing Science Centre Institute mm. and we couldn't be the Marketing Science Institute because that was a different entity that already exists that was something different. So we needed to have a new name. Yeah. And at that point, we wanted to honour Andrew for his work of bringing, you know, science to... Hey guys, it's Zach Ainsbury here with just a couple of quick reminders. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, then make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. There are plenty more interviews to come with some of the world's leading marketing academics and practitioners. You do not want to miss these. In the meantime, if you're looking for another way to connect, then follow me on Twitter at Zach Ainsbury. That is Z A C. A-N-E-S-B-U-R-Y for my take on the marketing issues of the day.